getting rich in your 20s. Sounds like a pretty good idea, if you ask me. Now, a bit about myself. If you guys are new to my channel, my name is Jaime, and I run one of the leading e-commerce agencies in the world, where we basically take e-commerce brands and we transform them into market leaders. Now, currently, my agency makes me around $50,000 a month profit. So the question is, am I rich? I would say no. But if you take a look at my income, that is a pretty decent amount, especially for a 21 year old. And so what I wanna do in this video is not brag about how much I make, because if you guys are not new to my channel, you obviously know that I only talk about my figures to number one, tell you that it's possible, and uh, number two, to show you proof, right? Because who wants to listen to someone who is not actually walking the talk? And so what I wanna do in this video is share with you the five things that have tremendously helped me to make money in my early 20s. These are honestly game changers. And the most important thing is they're not mainstream. So I never really hear people talk about this side of making money when you're young. So I'm really excited for this because I think it's gonna help a lot of you who are looking to make money in your 20s or looking to build generational wealth and, and really set yourself up for financial freedom very early in your journey and possibly retire young. So if that is of interest to you, all you're gonna do is keep on watching. <laughs> So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in descending order. So I'm gonna start with number five, and then I'm gonna end with the number one thing uh, that you should be doing to make money in your 20s. So number five is you wanna unplug from the mainstream narrative. And the reason why I say that is because the mainstream narrative is to graduate from college, get a nine to five job, and then just pretty much uh, work until retirement, and then just live out your uh, the, the rest of your life, right? And so the problem is when you're plugged into that mainstream narrative, it's gonna use all societal pressures to, to push you down that path. And it will just try to push as much as possible down the conventional path. And it will do this through uh, your parents, it will do this through your friends, it will do this through the news, it will do this through social media. And not only that, but it will reinforce the fears of possibly starting a business or going down a less traveled path. Okay, which is completely fine when you're just starting out. When I dropped out of college, I was shit scared, right? Obviously I knew I wanted to start my own business, but I had been plugged into the conventional narrative of just going to college and, and getting a, a nine to five job. And so I thought that if I dropped out of college, then I run the risk of not being successful in life. So what you wanna do when you start out and when you're starting your business and, and you're taking the path less traveled is you wanna create a distance between the mainstream narrative and what you're doing. You really just wanna block out the noise and focus on putting one uh, foot in front of the other and walking your own path. Getting practical, if your parents are a big a roadblock and a, and a big objection, then you wanna make sure you create a bit more distance between your parents and yourself until you actually have proof of concept, until you're successful and you can just show them, right, that you were right. You also wanna stop consuming the news. You wanna ideally block off as much social media as possible. And if there are friends who are doubting you, who are telling you just stay in college and, and reinforcing those fears that, you know, uh, subconsciously you have, you wanna make sure you create distance as well. I'm not saying do not listen to anyone, listen to the right people, listen to the people that are where you wanna be, that have done what you wanna do, right? Listen to those people, but do not listen to the people who are living a life that you do not wanna live. So that is point number five, and now on to the next point. The fourth thing to keep in mind if you wanna get rich in your 20s is that you have to understand that you have to be selfish to be selfless. Now, I generally believe that if you wanna create a tangible result in your life, a, a tangible change in a pretty short amount of time, what you wanna do is you wanna disappear for a while. You wanna take a few months or even possibly a year and completely disappear from the scene so you can just work on yourself. And that will involve saying no to a lot of things. Jaime, do you wanna go for a quick coffee? Nope. Uh, do you want to go out today? Nope. Do you want to take this shot with me? Nope. Uh, hi, I'm hosting a house party. Do you want to come to a house party? Nope. Right? Uh, now, I'm not saying you should say no to everything. I'm just saying you should pick your battles, you should pick your priorities. And so for me, during the, the year that I disappeared, which was this past year, I pretty much just scheduled the, the important dates for me, right? My really good friend's uh, birthdays, and uh, th that's pretty much it, right? And so if it wasn't scheduled in advance, I wasn't just gonna say yes to a plan that just popped up out of nowhere. And you really don't wanna feel bad about it because to be there for others, you need to be there for yourself. To be the best version for others, you need to focus on becoming the best version of yourself first. So don't feel like you're being selfish or don't feel bad about uh, saying no, right? You may get some resistance from it, but on the practical side of things, what really helped me is number one, really envisioning the version of myself that would become a year later from now if I just kept saying no. So I attached a really good emotion to say no, whereas if I hadn't done that visualization exercise, the no would have meant a fear of missing out for me. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing is understand that you're not gonna live your life uh, like this for the rest of your existence, right? This is just a, a period of time, maybe six, eight months, a whole year, where you're just being selfish. But the funny thing is, once you're done with that whole year of just being out of the scene and, and disappearing, then you can actually be much more selfless than most people will ever be in their own lifetime, right? Because now you have you know, time freedom, you have location freedom, now you have financial freedom, you have the, the ability to impact more people, you have the ability to be more present with your friends because you're good inside, right? So that's the second thing that you can do on the practical side of things. And the third thing is make sure that your circle understands you and possibly supports that decision. So you wanna have that conversation with your best friends, with your circle uh, beforehand, right? 
and, and tell them, hey, this is really important for me. I'm going to disappear for six to eight months and you know, possibly a year. And so I just want you to know that because if I say no to your plan, it doesn't mean that I don't like you. It doesn't mean that you should not invite me to more plans after I'm done with this period. It just means that for this whole year, I'm just locked in. I'm focused on myself and I'm building myself up so that I can pretty much set myself up for the next 10 years or the next 20 years. Okay. So that is the fourth point that you want to keep in mind. The third thing you need to do if you want to get rich in your 20s is you want to sacrifice the unnecessary. And this point builds on the fourth point. But essentially, you want to say no to anything that is not absolutely vital, anything that is not really important in your priority list. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you have your priorities in check. You know, what is really important to you? Maybe your best friends are really, really important to you. Maybe your, your tight knit uh, circle is very important to you. So you may not want to miss their birthday party or, or something that's really special to them, right? But anything that is not vital, you want to sacrifice. Do you really need to go out, you know, twice a week or every single week? Probably not, right? Do you really need to take that round of shots at dinner with your homies? Probably not. And here's the thing, and this is a mistake that I made when I was just starting out. And I did this particularly in high school. A lot of times we think that going to a party is just a time investment. You know, uh, you know why not go to a, to a party at 10 p.m. if I'm not even gonna work on my business at 10 p.m., why would I not do that? Um, what a lot of people fail to do is they, they fail to think of the second order consequences of that decision. So let me explain what I mean by this. Going to that party at 10 p.m., sure, maybe a four hour investment. You wouldn't work on your business for, for those four hours. Absolutely not, right? And I completely get that. So the first order consequence is you put four hours into this party, right? And also the first order consequence is probably that you had a bunch of fun with your friends. Now, the second order consequence is what most people fail to think about, right? The second order consequence is now you don't get enough sleep or you get a really poor uh, night's sleep. You're probably also hangover the next day and now you've built a bit of social momentum that wants you uh, to keep going out, right? You've seen a bit of a glimpse of, uh, of the fun and now you want to keep going out. And so those are the second order consequences. Now we need to think about the third order consequences. What is the third order consequence of being hangover and being really tired the next day? Well, now you're probably very useless. And most importantly, you've killed all the momentum that you had going for you with your business. And momentum is a massive thing. I could I could make a whole video on it. But once you start getting that momentum with your business, with you know being productive, uh, waking up early, you know staying true to your routines, when you kill that momentum. It's kind of like the, the, the train that was going at you know 200 kilometers an hour just completely stops on its tracks. And so then you have to reinvest a lot of energy into restarting this train. So those are the third order, order consequences. Now, the fourth order consequences is that it's probably going to take you an extra you know month or, or two months to actually see the type of results that you would have seen if you just had that momentum going for you and you kept that momentum and you kept that train running at, at 200 kilometers an hour. Those are the fourth order consequences of that small decision. And so when you stop thinking about just first order consequences and you start thinking about second, third, fourth order consequences, then you really start understanding the insane power and the insane benefit of just disappearing for a while and just focusing on yourself because just a little one distraction can throw you off and can kill your momentum completely. So that is the third point that you want to keep in mind. And now onto the second one. The final two points uh, deserve a bit of a change of scenery. Now, the second point that you want to keep in mind if you want to get rich in your 20s is finding the right balance between inner and outer game and becoming a master at inner and outer game. Let me explain what I mean by this. What I mean by outer game are the business strategies or the sales funnels, the people you hire in your team, the words that you say on a sales call, basically the core things that you do for your business. It's all about the actionable things you do to grow that business and make it successful. On the flip side, inner game are things like being able to take rejection, your relentless attitude and the ability to uh, go through roadblocks and keep going, right? Uh, your energy levels your degree of focus and discipline. That is all the inner game side of things. Now, it's really, really important to get the right balance because the people that I see fail in business is because they focus way too much on the outer game and they completely neglected the inner game. And so they weren't able to take rejections. They weren't able to have that relentless attitude to keep on going, right? Maybe sure they, they didn't really have the, the, the right strategies, the right outer game either, right? But uh, they really lack that inner game side of things. And so a lot of people that just focus on building a business and they've never done work on themselves, inner work on themselves, then they really struggle with facing rejections, uh, staying disciplined every single day and, and just chip away at it. Their energy levels are all over the place because their nutrition is not on point. Uh, they don't sleep right. Um, they're not meditating and maybe when they get to work, they cannot focus because they have an addiction to social media, right? And so it's really, really important to get the fine balance. Now, on the practical side of things, on top of building your business, on top of focusing on these right strategies and watching my YouTube videos, on top of uh, taking my one-to-one -one mentorship, for example, it's really important that you do a few practical things to really take your inner game to a whole new level. I could mention a ton of things, but I'm gonna keep it pretty simple to three things. The first one is meditation. You really wanna make sure that you meditate every single day and you get into that habit. Start with five minutes a day, then you can uh, bump it up to 10 minutes and then eventually get to 15, 20 minutes, right? I've got a bunch of videos on meditation on my channel, but meditation is gonna help you not only 
focus, but stay present and not really engage with your emotions as much, which is incredibly important as an entrepreneur, because if you don't engage with emotion, then it's much easier to keep chipping away at your business when you're facing you know, a rejection or whatever it is, right? That is the first thing. The second thing is you wanna make sure you reflect and analyze. So what I typically do uh, each day is, Right after I wake up, I do my reflection. So basically I reflect on the day that I've got ahead of me, the way I, I wanna show up for this day, uh, and some of the uh, roadblocks objections I may face, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing is before you go to bed, what I do is I write one thing that I learned that day, three things that I did well, at that day, three things that I'm proud of or three things that I accomplished and two things that I need to improve or get better at and that I didn't really do uh, very well that day. So when you do that, then you're reflecting and you're analyzing every single day and you're making those marginal gains to become a better version of yourself and to really master that inner game. And the final thing is you wanna expose yourself to positive stressors. So you wanna really get into the habit of doing hard shit, okay? Now, obviously there's a few things that you can do. Cold showers is a, is a great one. Um, doing uh, intense cardio is a, is a good one as well. Uh, lifting heavy weight is a good one as well. Doing fasting is a good one. The reason why positive stressors are incredibly healthy, apart from obviously the fact that you know, it's good for your body, it's simply because after you've done a you know incredibly cold shower or, or you've done a cold plunge for five minutes right going into a sales call or taking a bit of rejection or taking a, a no is so much easier because you've trained your body and your mind to do things that it doesn't want to do and to face rejection and failure so that is the third thing on the practical side of things and the final thing is you want to make sure you smash the like button if you're enjoying this video so far in all seriousness guys it helps a ton with the algorithm so if you're finding any value from this video i'd really appreciate it go ahead and gently tap the like button uh, wait um, and once you've done that we can go ahead and get back into the video the final thing you need to do if you want to get rich in your 20s is you want to make sure you pick the right financial vehicle the right business model because if you don't you're going to waste a bunch of time and probably you know three or four years in your 20s which are very very valuable and so the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you get clear, crystal clear on what you do not have when you're starting out so what you do not have is usually you don't have much experience you don't have much expertise and also most people don't have a lot of money okay what you do have on the flip side is you tend to have energy because you're young uh, you tend to have time and unless you have a part-time job and you know uni etc cetera, etc cetera, but you tend to have more time than most people in their 40s and 50s and i'm sure you have a lot of hunger okay and so when you're picking your business model you want to pick a business model that lends itself to your current situation for example if you were to start a drop shipping or amazon fba business right now, for those type of businesses, usually you have to invest quite a bit of money into that business. You have to pay for the ads. Oftentimes you have to pay for a minimum order of inventory. You definitely have to pay for a website. And so you have to pay for a myriad of different things, okay? And that might cost you a thousand, you know, 1,500, 2,000 bucks to just start that business and to continue to run that business every single month, okay? Now, compare that to something like SMMA, right? With SMMA, the, the hard expenses, I'm talking software, you can actually invest less than, a, than 50 bucks and you'd still be able to run your SMA, right? Every single month, which is great because if you don't sign a client, you're not literally throwing money down the drain, okay? So no big investment. Now, the second thing is with SMA, for example, the scope is quite limited to one single thing, which is your core service, for example, Facebook ads, right? And so when you don't have a lot of experience and expertise, it is way easier to uh, become an expert or master this one single service then let's just say you're starting a, an e-commerce brand, right? And you have to master logistics. You have to master, uh, master product development, marketing, branding, and a ton of other business components. Uh, so that is the second thing. And the third thing is, if you sign one client for your social media marketing agency, right? One client can literally mean $3,000 profit every single month, okay? And so not only are the profit margins incredibly high and very, very healthy, okay? But one client can literally change your life. Okay. So the impact of going from zero to one is so much greater than the impact of, let's just say you have a dropshipping business, right? And you get one customer. That could literally mean like maybe 40, 50 bucks, right? And so going from zero to one is so much more lucrative um, and, and it can have a tangible impact. They can literally change your life going from zero to one with SMME. So that is the first and final point that you wanna do if you wanna get rich in your 20s. Now, if you've gotten to this point of the video, it probably means that maybe you found out a bit of value out of it. So if you did drop a like down below, helps out down with the algorithm and the whole channel, I'd really appreciate it. Also, if you wanna learn more about SMMA and you haven't done so already, go ahead and check out my free masterclass on how to sign and keep four figure SMMA clients. It's honestly an incredible training. The feedback I've been getting on it is just insane. People literally implementing the strategies, the templates, the scripts that I give you in there and getting results. And the final thing is if you don't wanna miss my next video, go ahead and sub to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you never miss an update. And as always, hope everything's going well in your journey. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.